All right, we are back here in Blender and now it is time to create the the actual animations. So in the la in the last part we created the the idle pose and the reference pose and in this uh, lecture we are going to start creating the idle animation. So let's just get right into it. First, we want to go ahead and select the gun in post mode. So I'm just going to select the gun bone here. Um, so first we got to switch to object mode and then select it and post mode. And then we can go to the gun idle pose animation that we created before. And let's just duplicate it. So press this one and it's going to create a new action uh, with the same keyframes. And we can just call this one uh, Let's call it gun, uh, gun idle, which is a pretty, pretty clear name, you know. And this animation is just going to be like a basic kind of uh, up and down movement. So kind of like your, like if your character is, is just you know standing and breathing, uh, you know, in like an idle stance. So it's just going to be something like this. Well, maybe not this exaggerated, but. <laughs> Something like this, just kind of up and down. We might also add some rotation, so make it rotate a bit as well. All right, and let's start by going to the graph editor here and expanding the keyframes. And the first thing we want to move is on the Z axis, so we can go ahead and select this, double click on it. And we can see that there's a, a keyframe here at frame zero. And that's it. So there's only one keyframe currently. And our idle animation is going to be around 60 frames. So we can actually go down here and, <clears throat> and set the start frame to one and then the end frame to 60. And this is going to give us a, a pretty nice speed for the animation. All right, and let's go ahead and place out a new keyframe here. So let's expand this. And we can actually duplicate the C keyframe here. So right click on it, press Shift D, and just uh, drag it out. Let's place it on 60. So now we have the same ending point as the starting point, which means that if you play the animation, it's not gonna move at all. It's just gonna, just gonna be like this the same. So let's also press uh, place one here at 30. So halfway through. And let's go back to the graph editor. And double click on the Z and then press uh, delete on your numpad to zoom in. And now we can see that there's t uh, three keyframes here. And what we want to do is we want to move this one down. So the center one, we want to move it down a bit so that the gun actually moves down on the screen, which makes sense, right? <laughs> so let's uh, right click on this and then we can press G and Y to move it on the Y axis. And now we can also see that if we move it, the gun is actually moving accordingly on the screen. So if we move the keyframe up, or sorry, if we move the curve up, we can see that the gun moves up, and if we move the curve down, we can see that the gun is also moving down. So let's... Oh, and also we can hold down control and press middle mouse button to kind of scale this and kind of uh, move around in here, which is very useful. So let's just zoom in here, and let's just move it down slightly something like that. All right, so now if we play it, we can press spacebar to play it. Uh, okay, we can see that it's, it's moving up and down slightly. Actually, let me check. Ah, and there's actually a problem here that we need to fix. So it's playing a bit slowly, I think, and that is because we have actually set the frame rate to 25 instead of 30, which is the default. Um, so let's go ahead and change this to 30 
and we can do that by going to the uh, output properties here and changing the frame rate to 30 and this is the most common uh, frame rate when you're animating for games uh, if you're making movies or if you're like you know making like an animation for a movie uh, usually 24 is the default uh, but for games usually 30 works best and let's go ahead and play it again and now we can see that it's a bit smoother it feels a bit more uh, a bit faster too a bit more uh, frames going on here which is nice and one more thing that we can actually do here is we can make this curve a uh, loop because if you look at it now it actually s starts and ends and then there's nothing after it so it's just like a flat just like a straight line here and we can actually make this loop so we get a get a perfect loop um, so let's double click here and select all keys and then we can press shift E and choose make cyclic and now we can see that it actually has like an infinite loop so it just keeps looping basically forever you know yeah it just keeps going <laughs> which is nice because now we get the perfect uh, looping motion here and even if we change the location here if we move it like this it would still be a perfect loop and it would still match perfectly which is very useful so let's go ahead and play this check it out all right so there's some up and down motion here very smooth very nice and it does look a bit stiff though so we might want to add some rotation to it so let's go ahead <clears throat> let's go ahead and uh, add some rotation to it so go back to the graph here and double click on X the X curve let's focus in on it and we can also zoom out a bit here okay so we basically want to do the same for the X curve that we did for the Z curve but we're also going to offset it a bit so it, it doesn't match perfectly so we don't want the rotation to exactly match the up and down movement because it's going to feel very stiff or like robotic so let's go ahead and first duplicate these keyframes and this is basically just what, like we did for the z-axis as well so just duplicate the keyframes and go back here and select it and let's make it cyclic too so double click select and then shift e and make cyclic and let's move it down a bit here all right so now we can see that it actually rotates here in the 3d view so let's just move it down slightly and let's also move it up slightly on the first and last keyframe so kind of like this and <laughs> now if you play it it's looks a bit off looks a bit weird um, and that's because the keyframes are currently at the same uh, spacing here so they they all use the same locations so they're synced which makes it look a bit odd so let's go ahead and uh, offset these a bit so let's select the uh, x-axis keys here and press GX to move them on the x-axis and let's just offset them slightly something like that and because we have the the cyclic modifier here we can actually move them anywhere and it's, it's still gonna loop perfectly and let's go ahead and play that and right so now we can see that it's a bit more smooth it feels a bit more natural like the movement is there's like a bit more weight to it and I, th I do think it's a bit too much so let's go ahead and scale them down a bit so we can press S and Y and just scale them down a bit maybe even a bit more um, yeah something like that looks pretty good I think and that's pretty much it for a basic idle I mean you, you can always 
you can mess around with all the other keys you can make it move on the on the x-axis or you could rotate it on the uh, y-axis or you know make it make it a bit more fancy um but yeah for for basic idle and this is pretty much usually what i do for the basic setup and then i add some more details to it but yeah that's that's pretty much it for this this basic idle animation we made and let's go ahead and save it by pressing the the shield here to make sure that it actually saves like that and uh, yeah that's our idle animation and that's it for this lecture in the next lecture we are going to create the walk animation so i'll see you then